Hey, 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 so you're back again. So today I'll be exploring something called as reactive programming. So it's a way through which you react to certain events and do some kind of work. Now I want to explore this, so let's get on to it. Okay, that's good. So I wrote a first reactive program, which actually first deleted everything from my repository. Then it ran this person flux, which is actually taking the names, transforming it to a person object and then saving it. Okay. Followed by after that, I'm finding all the objects that I saved and then logging them. Okay. That's pretty good. Actually, I got to, it's a very small program, but yeah, got to learn a lot. So right now moving from the MongoDB thing, I figured out that there is also an R2DB database connectivity. So it's a reactive way of communicating with relational databases. So I'm going to explore this right now. Okay, so finally I could connect the Postgres server with uh, which I'm running right now on Docker and I'm running this PG admin also as a Docker image, both PG admin and Postgres running in Docker. Uh, I had to inspect the, uh, the container for Postgres and find this IP address and then connect the IP address. Uh, no, it failed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay it's working it's at least inserting the person's entity inside but it has not got any id hmm. i think i have to do the auto generation okay. it actually works with the serial type such that the serial type allows r2dbc to actually auto generate an, an id and then populate it while saving it so that's how it detects it so till now i have done reactive programming by following along josh's video through which he did a reactive r2 dbc approach to a relational database as well as using uh, mongodb so now I want to try this different guide from Spring Boot for reactive REST services. I want to try this out and see how this thing works. ATT slash request. Wow, okay, that's nice. So I got the response which was given by this response handler over here. Uh, I registered a particular request and this is the response handler. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make a web client inside this itself and try to invoke this request. Let's see how it works. Uh, I figured out how to do error handling for the web client for reactive calls that's nice okay let's see what i can explore more further so as you see it divided 24 by 2 so 12 then 24 by 4 6 then it got 0 because an exception occurred here it sent in 0, then it sent 10, then it sent 20 because it resumed with these new flux values. Not the values, not, not the resume values from here. So this is pretty good for the first exercise using Spring to do reactive uh, programming. 
I just scratch the surface of reactive programming. There's lots that can be done using this. As, as and when I get time, I will actually explore this more further. Let me clean up the code right now. So till now we explored a uh, reactive programming using Spring and we explored it with MongoDB, we explored it with R2DBC uh, with uh, Postgres and also reactive programming using REST services. So this was done using Spring. Now there is another way of doing of doing reactive programming. So there is something called as Rx Java. So I'll be exploring this now next. So this has something called as uh, observables and I want to explore this one also. So let's see how it goes. So I explored a lot about reactive programming and I'll be exploring more such kind of things. So see you in my next one.